In the Clone Wars, both belligerent factions had their fair share of heroes and villains. The Confederacy, though known mostly for its murderous leadership, was home to many separatist idealists whose hearts were in the right place. Similarly, while we usually hear about the heroes of the Republic, it had an evil side to it as well. You may be familiar with some of the Republic's less heroic leaders, but odds are you've never heard about the man we'll be talking about today. His name was Armand Issard, and he was the most evil being in the Republic leadership, the architect of Palpatine's police state. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Armand Issard started his career in government working for the Republic Office of Analysis, but he quickly rose through the ranks, eventually becoming the Director General of the Senate Bureau of Intelligence and the Director of Republic Intelligence. Between the two positions, he had a near complete control over the Republic's key intelligence departments, which, in the time before the Separatist Crisis, mostly kept tabs on small crises out in the rim. Issard was also notable for another reason, he was a close friend and ally of Senator Palpatine. Isard, together with Kinman Doriana, Sait Pestage, and Janus Grigetus, was part of Palpatine's inner circle, one of a select few that did the Senator's dirty work. Isard used his power within the SBI to discredit some of Palpatine's rivals, clearing the way for the Senator's rise to power. When Palpatine became Supreme Chancellor, Isard continued to work alongside him. Shortly before the Clone Wars, Issard fired a number of SBI sub-directors, supposedly for corruption, but in reality, he was consolidating power for the office of the Supreme Chancellor, building a monopoly on intelligence for Palpatine. Issard first came to prominence during the early years of the Separatist Crisis. In the two years between the formation of the CIS and the Clone Wars, Issard used the powers of the SBI to suppress Separatist voices, crushing protests on Coruscant and shutting down Holonet relays and sectors that seceded from the Republic. Issard claimed that this was all in the name of security. In reality, his crackdowns were just the start of a much broader campaign of suppression. Palpatine had a special job for Ahmed Issard. He was to build up a police and surveillance state for the Republic, laying the foundations for the Empire in the process. To this end, he had Issard consolidate control over information both censoring what Republic citizens got to see and by gathering as much information on them as possible. Palpatine gave the SBI and Republic intelligence plenty of free reign to make this job easier, and Issard largely did the rest. This process began during the Separatist Crisis, but it really kicked into high gear with the outbreak of the Clone Wars. After the Battle of Geonosis, Issard got some new toys to play with the Coruscant Guard and the Republic Special Operations Brigade. He was also appointed to the Security and Intelligence Council, a war council of Palpatine's close allies which gave him an even broader range of power. With the Clone Wars giving him an excuse to do pretty much everything with his newfound authority, Issad began seizing control of Republic media and cracking down on dissent. In the early days of the Clone Wars, the Separatists began tight-beaming propaganda broadcasts into Republic space. Their main program, the CIS Shadow Feed, was meant as an alternative to the Republic's Holonet News, which Palpatine had nationalized at the start of the war. The Shadow Feed presented stories of Republic defeats and misdeeds, and was quickly branded as fake news by Issard and Republic intelligence. In response to the rise of the Shadow Feed, Issard tightened control over the Holonet, regulating all channels accessible in the Republic much more carefully. Any media that Issard and his cronies deemed separatist propaganda was censored. Censored material ranged from genuine separatist propaganda to any broadcast even remotely critical of Palpatine. Through the Republic Holonet, Issard carefully constructed an official, state-approved narrative of the Clone Wars, which the vast majority of loyalists in the galaxy accepted as fact. In Issard's version of the Clone Wars, the greatest hero of the war was Palpatine, credited for single-handedly keeping the Republic together. The achievements of the Jedi were often greatly understated, with credit for their actions instead given to the clone troopers and recruited officers that served under them, most notably Wilhuf Tarkin and his brother Gideon Tarkin. This came with one notable exception. At Palpatine's request, Isard also emphasized the achievements of Anakin Skywalker and, by extension, Obi-Wan Kenobi. In 21 BBY, 
Palpatine arranged for the Senate to pass the Enhanced Security and Enforcement Act, which pretty much gave Republic authorities a pass to trample on civil liberties as much as they liked. Naturally, Isad and his subordinates exploited this. Republic intelligence began spying on Republic citizens, especially inhabitants of Coruscant, Senators, and Jedi. On Coruscant, Isad began using the Coruscant Guard to terrorize the populace. Isad worked with Commander Thyer of the Coruscant Guard to establish Homeworld Security Command, which was ostensibly meant to guard Coruscant against separatist threats. In reality, Homeworld Security Command was the prototype for the Imperial Police State, essentially Isad's personal Gestapo. On Isad's command, the Guard suppressed any and all protests regardless of legality, deported members of non-human species associated with the CIS, and carried out random, warrantless raids on homes in the underworld. By the end of 20 BBY, the lower levels of Coruscant were virtually in a state of martial law, while an extensive network of security checkpoints were set up in the upper levels. On Isard's orders, members of the Coruscant Guard even began harassing senators that opposed Palpatine on key issues. Isard's men even disappeared a few of Palpatine's rivals, most notably Senator C.T. Ashgard. On top of his work destroying civil liberties in the Republic, Armand Isard also used his powers to suppress or devastate planets he saw as a threat to security. On his recommendation, many captured separatist worlds, such as Jan Fatal, were indefinitely placed under martial law and denied a voice in the Galactic Senate supposedly as a means to keep the planet under Republic control. Isard was also responsible for the destruction of an entire planet. After a ship carrying stone mites crashed on Coruscant and devastated a swath of galactic city, Isard determined that the vessel came from the planet Oceon. As revenge, Isard had a team of scientists create mutant stone mines and then bombard Oceon with them, claiming the planet housed separatist biolabs to the media. However, that was a lie. Oceon had no separatist presence. Nonetheless, the mutant stone mites rapidly destroyed the planet's crust, forcing its entire population to flee. By the end of the Clone Wars, the Republic had become an empire in all but name. The Republic military, the office of the Supreme Chancellor, and their affiliates controlled virtually everything. The civil liberties Republic citizens had once enjoyed were pretty much gone. All official media was censored, all suspected separatists were spied on, harassed, or even disappeared, and the citizens of many Republic worlds lived under the boot of ruthless clone security units. A majority of this was due to the work of Armand Isard. It was on the last day of the Clone Wars, however, that Palpatine and Isard would drive the final nail into the Republic's coffin. On that fateful day, a group of senators opposed to Palpatine delivered the Petition of the 2000, which demanded that Palpatine relinquish his emergency powers. Palpatine handed the petition off to Isard, who immediately set about having the senators who signed it arrested for treason. Over the course of the next few weeks, as the Republic became the Galactic Empire, Armand Isard had all remaining dissident senators hunted down. After the declaration of a new order, Isard became the head of Imperial Intelligence, which consolidated Republic Intelligence, the SBI, and other intelligence branches Isard had commissioned. Isard worked with Darth Vader to establish a new branch of intelligence, the Inquisitors, to hunt down any Jedi who survived Order 66. He personally aided the Inquisitors in tracking down these fugitives. Early in the Dark Times, Isard established the Lusankya prison on Coruscant, a black site where the greatest enemies of the Empire would be locked up and tortured. This was part of a broader campaign of detention and torture Isar directed against the Imperial citizens, intended to crush any and all anti-Imperial sentiment. Under the Empire, Isard and his secret police terrorized the galactic citizenry, abducting anyone who was even slightly suspicious in their eyes. They created a climate of fear in which Imperial citizens wouldn't hesitate to turn in their neighbors to the authorities, fearing retribution from Imperial intelligence if they didn't. Armand Isard had a daughter, Usan, who he raised to be his successor as the head of Imperial intelligence. Usan Isard did eventually take her father's place, though not in the way he had wanted. In Zero BBY, Usan staged a coup in Imperial Intelligence, lobbying baseless accusations of treason against her father and having him arrested. Like many of his own victims, Armand Isard was arrested on false charges and summarily executed. His own daughter was said to have been the one to shoot him. 
So what do you guys think? Would you like to hear the story of Hussain Isad who followed in her father's footsteps? Let us know that in the comment section below. Thanks for watching guys.